Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Uh, so brute force password attacks are performed in two different stages within a professional penetration test. We're gonna take a look at the differences between these two types of attacks and then demonstrate how to perform them in multiple examples. Performing brute force password attacks is considered a core skill set. So let's take a look at how it's done correctly. So a brute force attack is a way to gain access to accounts by trying all possible combinations of usernames and passwords until the correct one is actually found. And we're gonna do that within a professional penetration testing lab environment. So brute force attacks occur typically in two stages of the CKC. So the first time is during the reconnaissance stage when we try to find the default usernames and passwords on exposed protocols. The second time we perform a brute force password attack is during the exploitation phase of the CKC. That's when we're trying to leverage the information that we gathered during the reconnaissance phase, and then use that information to generate a list of usernames. So the good news is that the tools are exactly the same in both the reconnaissance phase and the exploitation phase. And the only difference is the actual word lists that we use. So let's perform a reconnaissance stage brute force attack first. Before we begin, I just wanna make sure to remind everyone to visit our website at Pentest TV, where you can sign up for free training and then watch other tutorials that have been deemed not suitable for YouTube. We also have a Discord server that you should check out and uh, all links are in the description below. On the screen is the command we're gonna to use to perform a brute force attack. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be against the Postgres database and that is on the Metasploitable 2 server. So we're gonna use the default username and password files for Postgres. That's found in the Metasploit dictionary folder. Once we run the command, we can see that Postgres is using a weak default password. So we would perform this type of attack using the default usernames and passwords for every protocol that we find on the system and all the systems within our penetration test. This is because in the hope of we can identify an easy way to access the target. So remember, we're only looking for default credentials in the reconnaissance stage. We'll perform a more robust brute force attack later, which is of course going to be in the exploitation stage, which we'll do next. So the first step for this example is to perform some reconnaissance on the target so that we can create a list of usernames that we wanna attack. Obviously this is done as part of the reconnaissance phase, but I just wanna show you one way to grab account information on a system so we have something to work with for this example. So we're gonna use nmap uh, for this next one. Uh, and this command will run the SMB user enumeration script against the target system. So you can see I use both the grep and the cut command to clean up the results just a little bit. And then once we run the nmap command, we get a list of usernames to add to our brute force attack. So I'm gonna clean up the list a little bit first. So let me go ahead and take care of that. I cleaned up the username list, which we can see here. Notice that I also added a couple usernames. Uh, so specifically, I did lowercase versions of anything that had capitalizations in the name, just to be safe. And then I also added admin and administrator, simply because they're also very common usernames and you never know, we might actually get lucky. Okay, so let's start our brute force attack as part of the CKC exploitation stage. Remember, we've already looked for default credentials. So in this stage, we're actually just expanding our user lists to include any accounts we discovered during reconnaissance. On the screen, we can see how to conduct a brute force attack against the Metasploitable server. So we're gonna use the username list that we created earlier, which is identified with the dash capital L flags. So we also need to select a password file as well. So we're gonna just use the dash capital P flag. And for this example, we're gonna use the small unix dash passwords.txt file, which is also found in the Metasploit dictionary folder. I'm also including the dash E flag with NSR. Now in a real penetration test, you're gonna to wanna to use a more robust password file. So just be aware that you need to develop that for your particular situation and your particular customer. One other thing is that you can see in this command that I'm targeting the FTP protocol. 
I intentionally chose a clear text protocol because with an encrypted protocol like SSH, it can take significantly longer when we're doing this brute force attack. So the truth is that the FTP brute force attack will still take a while. So the more ways that we can reduce the time needed to perform this attack, the better. Let's go ahead and launch the attack and then see what we get and how long it takes. So it looks like the scan completed and it took us about 30 minutes using a small user list and a small password file. We can also see that our brute force attack was successful since we have credentials. So targeting FTP was pretty straightforward and successful, but let's take a look now on how to perform a brute force attack against a website. In this example, we're targeting the DVMA application running on the Metasploitable server. If we take a look at the source code, we can see the form for logging into the system. So we're gonna need some of this information simply to perform an HTTP brute force attack using Hydra. So there's a lot of information here, so let's just take it one step at a time. In the Hydra command, notice that we're using HTTP post form. So we're using this one because it correlates to how the website is processing the form specifically through post. So there's three variables we have to concern ourselves with in the Hydra attack against an HTTP, HTTPS server. So one of the variables is it's the username. The second one is the password field. And then we also have to provide what the web server supplies us when there is a failed login. The values user and pass is where Hydra will insert the brute force values of the usernames and passwords. When we fail to log in, the page returns us to login.php page. So we'll just use that for our failure value. So this can seem a bit more complicated than when we were just doing the FTP, but just understand this is how to perform a brute force attack against a web service. And this is actually a critical skill to learn. So make sure to practice against different websites within your pen testing lab. The DVWA itself actually has multiple challenges for brute force password attacks against web logins, so make sure to check those out. So once we run the command, we can see that Hydra was able to brute force the website login successfully. The results identified that the username and the login for DVWA is admin and password. So again, we've got another successful brute force attack using Hydra against another protocol, which in this instance is HTTP. So we took a look at performing brute force password attacks, both in the reconnaissance and the exploitation stage. And we performed the attacks against multiple protocols, including a website. If you have any questions about this type of attack, please leave them in the comments section below or join our Discord server where our community is actually very happy to help. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.